all these different things are, are really leading us to a day where software is much cheaper and you have to be able to compete uh, on that kind of level. And we think that's uh, what's really important about freemium. Uh, and a free trial is not enough. So there's a lot of conversation that, that you know, what is, actual, what is freemium really? Is it, is it a free trial? Is it a 30-day trial of your product? Um, is it just a you know, test download? Um, I, I, I think that, that freemium is really about giving away your product for free and, and then charging for uh, additional functionality on top of that. Um, but there are conditions, as we've, as we've discussed and, and as have we've, have we've heard today, um, where freemium doesn't make sense in your business, right? Um, if you have a really small uh, target customer base, then it's not really going to make a lot of sense um, because you won't be able to get enough scale. Um, or if you're selling to the government, for instance, right? Um, they have a lot of taxpayer dollars that, that, uh, that they can pay for your technology. So um, there's plenty of ways to deliver your product to those types of segments um, and make plenty of money. So freemium is not for everyone. Uh, and so make sure you do the math. And we saw this in the earlier presentation. And that's really important. Um, because if you go into this without a large enough uh, type of market, a, a horizontal enough market, then you're not going to make a lot of money doing that. So these are the caveats. Um, so the first thesis of why we went into freemium was that fundamentally happy customers will pay us. So if we can deliver our product to a lot of users and we can get them happy about our service, now not all of these customers will pay us, but if we can create a good experience for enough users, um, then we can build better technology and new services on top of that that, that people will want to pay for. Um, so this was the first thesis that we had and we deeply believed in, in product excellence. Um, and the second thesis was that technology decisions are now being made by users, not management. And this is really critical, again, if you're going to do an end user delivered service to the enterprise. Don't put up a wall in front of that user. These users are not the ones that are ultimately making the purchasing decisions in their organization. Uh, it's someone in IT or management or operations. And so uh, if you build a wall for that user to actually be successful on your technology, you're not going to get a lot of success or a lot of scale. So that was um, the second thesis that we decided was if we were going to try and really take on the enterprise market and compete against SharePoint and, um, and other you know, larger enterprise products, we would have to give our product to the end users, make them happier about our service uh, than the alternatives, and then we would be able to sell into the enterprise. And so that was the second thesis that, uh, um, that we think was really important. So here's why I think you'd be crazy to not give out your software for free. And of course, this is given that you've followed the other conditions um, of, uh, of that, we've, that we've just mentioned. But first, lower friction means faster traction, right? So if you can bring down the wall to deliver or acquire your customer or for your customer to acquire you, um, then you can hook them really, really early and really easily. So the great thing with a service like Box.net or Zobni or some of these other technologies is that when you're using the service, you're actually contributing uh, a lot of data to, to the service, which means that you uh, are, are now have a better relationship with that product and, and it's much stickier. So, so if you think about from, from a capitalistic standpoint, why wouldn't Box make that as easy as possible to do in the, in the first part of the process? And one of those barriers is a credit card, and one of those barriers is thinking about um, what is the value I'm going to get. I'd rather prove to you uh, the value that, that I'm going to be able to deliver to you as a customer um, rather than you having to get conv convinced by some, some sort of marketing language. So hook them super early and get their data, um, and then they'll be much more convinced to, to continue using it. Um, you also get higher marketing leverage, right? So your users become your marketers. You get uh, instantly, you have millions of evangelists of your product, and that's super powerful. So you no longer have to spend lots of money on fancy advertising or billboards. Um, you can actually put your product together um, and, and have them share the service yourself. We do have a billboard, by the way, if, uh, if you don't get that joke, but that's fine. So, um, so the idea is, again, make your users your marketers and make sure that they're able to, to deliver your product for you, um, and you'll get an extremely high amount of leverage. So the majority of all of our enterprise customers that come into Box start out as end users of the service. Um, so so it's, it's really working, and, and it means that uh, people can spread your product for you. It also forces you to make a much, much better product. So if you think about things in, from a product philosophy, uh, this is a really important aspect of, of the freemium model. You can no longer go and sell into an organization with um, really fancy marketing or really fancy sales because you're giving them, you're, you're much more transparent, you're giving them the product right up front, and you're saying, this is what we do. If you like us, then you can pay for more of it. But no one's going to pay you for more of a product that they don't like. So, um, so you're really saying that, that we trust our product and we trust that our users are going to want to pay for it. So uh, it forces you to make a better product. You can no longer sell, you know, like the old days of Oracle and, and go into an organization and have, you know, a vapor product for, for the first year or whatever. It has to be able to deliver value right away. Um, and sales will love you for it. So your sales organization will absolutely love the fact that they have users calling you. So instead of taking 100 prospects and calling and then converting two or three of them uh, at a wildly inefficient rate, you now have customers calling you. So this is much more effective now to build this inside sales organization that is only talking to qualified users of your product. And that's really, really powerful. Um, and it means that, that you can grow really efficiently and you can understand the metrics uh, around your business a lot faster. Um, and it means that, uh, that people are super excited to actually talk to sales, um, which is really important. And it, it also means you can reach traditionally impenetrable markets, right? Um, so 
uh, you know, a lot of times we think about small businesses as being hard to reach because they're, they're sort of disconnected, they're uh, disparately organized geographically, uh, they don't have, you know, traditional, you know, conventions and, um, and ways that they acquire technology. So they're really hard to ac have access to. But the great thing with freemium is that they actually come to us and they're, the product actually spreads uh, within their own ecosystem. So, um, so we're able to, to reach them much faster. The same thing for enterprise software, right? We wouldn't be able to build out the right kind of sales organization to reach enterprises at the scale we're at. Um, but instead what happens is you have the users spreading the product for you, uh, which enables us to get into new markets and new industries that, uh, that we would have never had time to have. So again, it's all about listening to your customers and making sure you're paying attention to when you've actually uh, appeared in a new industry, um, which is really important uh, um, as you develop the product and, and what you want to be doing.